Okay, sorry for the change in format. Um, I know the light board that we normally use is much cooler than this, but right now it doesn't really make sense to go into school to record videos. So some of our videos will be done this way. Um, you still get to see me. I can still do weird things with my hands um, and you'll get to see as I write in real time. Okay, um, last class you learned how to write the name of transition metals. And part of that meant finding the Roman numeral that went in their name. Um, today we're gonna go the reverse direction. So the first thing to keep in mind is what that Roman numeral represents. Ideally, you're saying it in your head right now, so pause and ask yourself, what does the Roman numeral represent? And you should be able to say that it represents the charge of the transition metal. So when I'm going the other way, when I have the formula like I do here, um, I'm going to write out the symbols, write out their charges, crisscross, and reduce if I need to. Just remember that the Roman numeral tells me the charge of the transition metal. It's always a positive charge. All metals are positively charged. So as soon as I see iron three, I know I'm dealing with iron with a plus three charge. Then it says chloride. Chloride means the ion of chlorine, which I look on my periodic table is a minus one charge. I crisscross those charges. So Fe gets a one, but I don't have to write that. Cl3, and that would be iron three chloride. Um, oops, another example for you, copper two oxide. So again, the Roman numeral is telling me the charge of the copper copper as a plus two. And then oxide is the ion of oxygen. I look on the periodic table at the top of the column. It says it's a minus two. So then I crisscross, I would get Cu2O2. But remember that if we can reduce, we should reduce. We're just looking for how many of each do I need to cancel those charges out. So really I have CuO as my answer. Um, that's it. Go try those.